www.swsbomb.gov.au that's www.sws.bom.gov.au um, you'll find a rural information and uh, you'll see how the uh, that little red bar on the screen there is indicating that um, uh, the, the possibility of, uh, of major uh, severe storm is um, on, the, on the cards to happen and uh, of course uh, it's also um, potential for uh, for all activity here. This, is, uh, this particular image here uh, shows the uh, auroral activity over the North and South Pole on a um, uh, on a, um, a flattened map of, uh, of the globe, how it looks. Um, another representation of that is, of course, this image, which is what I always show, and that's the current uh, auroral activity over uh, over Antarctica. So it's um, it's not uh, necessarily beaming our way, but it is pretty close. And I would say that um, for those in Tasmania, there should be some evidence of a of glow or activity in the in the um, in the southern sky, I would suspect, um, and of course, uh, this this is uh, one image that uh, came off uh, um, spaceweather.com of a, a rural activity, uh, and um, this was taken uh, in South Dakota. Uh, but more interestingly enough, of course, is a, uh, a photograph taken from Heathcote uh, last night. Uh, of a rural activity and have a look at this gentlemen and ladies um, this was taken from a raw from <laughs> from a Heathcote our dark sky site at ASV's dark sky site last night and uh, that was um, uh, I knew I should have written his name down uh, I thought I kept it open the page open but I didn't um, what was that shown? What was that shown? My apologies, I was going to say his, uh, his name, but I can't find it in a hurry. <sighs> um, where was that? I think it was the uh, astronomy, the astrophotography group. Um, astro. I think it's this area here. I can't hurry up. Oh, um, Here's the image. I'm just trying to see who that was. Uh, it's not there, it's not in that group. I don't know where I saw it, but I, d I did see it somewhere. And I, I texted, or I, I sent a message off to him to uh, find out a bit more about it, which he did reply. And he gave me those interesting links to um, uh, to the government uh, site uh, where you can uh, find out about the indices uh, activity. I'm just quick this uh, going through my Facebook page here, hopefully to find it, but it's not coming up, so I shan't uh, waste any more time on that, I think. Okay, not to worry. Um, so, uh, the solar wind is currently at 452.6 kilometres a second at a density of 5.71 protons per cubic centimetre. There are currently, as Tanya was showing, there's currently one, two, three, four, five sunspots. Yep, five sunspots on the uh, the disk of the sun as we speak. And uh, the sunspot number is currently 73. Uh, the radio sun is currently at 151 solar flux units. And the KP index is uh, currently at 6.67 and it's indicating a storm. The 24 hour KP index is as much as 7.67 also indicating storm. So things are rocking and rolling. And uh, I know I've gone over time, I didn't think I would, but there it is, but I do want to mention this, this is all also part of uh, spaceweather.com uh, part of the uh, article here is that a uh, solar radio burst at night. Interesting. Something very rare and strange happened last month, February 23rd. Growing sunspot AR3234 produced an M-class solar 
uh, flare. It was nearly midnight in Florida when the explosion occurred, so you'd expect that no one would, would uh, no one there would notice. But on the contrary, uh, in the community of High Springs in, in Florida, amateur radio astronomer David Tlimsky, Tlimsky recorded a strong shortwave radio burst. And here's a graphic of this. It's most interesting for those interested in this sort of thing. All right, there it is. Um, and uh, just to continue on a bit further on this one, um, uh, you can see the sun at midnight in Florida sometimes, says Topinski. Uh, and uh, this is uh, what his instruments recorded while the flare was underway. So this is a spectrogram uh, taken uh, in the frequency range of 20 megahertz down as low as 17 megahertz. So if you look to the to the right of the screen there, uh, that that uh, frequency range is covering from 17 to 30 megahertz, and the flare was recorded at 06 hours <coughs> UTC. And uh, the spectrogram, this is what was recorded on on the spectrogram, and the, there's the chart recording in, insert as well. He says that a double wave of static washed over Florida, filling the radio spectrum with noise at all frequencies of below 25 megahertz. The sun was at 69 degrees below the horizon when this happened, he mar marvels. So how is this possible? The entire body of our planet was blocked, what was blocking the event from Topinski's antenna. It's called antipodal focusing, antipodal focusing. First postulated by Marconi more than a hundred years ago. Antipodal, podal, podal, uh, focusing is a mode of radio propagation in which the signal starts out on one side of the planet, gets trapped between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere, and travels to the opposite hemisphere. Waves converging at the antipode can create a surprisingly strong signal. And if you look at spaceweather.com, they've got a link to a paper that was uh, recently classified, but has been declassified. And I've got a, a, a bit of a graphic here of that too, actually. It's a bit blurry because it was blown up. Um, it's not, the, the paper isn't uh, terribly clear to read, but um, apparently it's been... I don't know why it was classified in the first place, I mean, honestly. Um, but um, this, uh, this diagram from a declassified US government report shows the basic geometry of antipodal focusing. Uh, this is the second or maybe third midnight solar flare burst that uh, Topinski has seen in 10 years. Um, so yes, solar flares can produce radio signals. Topinski's midnight burst was a type 4 caused by streams of electrons shooting from the sun's atmosphere in the aftermath of, of the flare. Plasma waves rippling uh, away from the streams emitted intense bursts of natural radio static. The burst was first observed in broad daylight at the Learmouth Solar Observatory in Australia, then curved around the Earth to reach Tobinsky. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's really quite uh, quite interesting uh, what uh, what can be sometimes measured. This is another graphic uh, from the same article on the uh, spaceweather.com site. Uh, Tobinski t says that um, uh, it turns out that this method of spying, or I'll go back one paragraph, this propagation mode was used during the Cold War, notes Tobinski. The US would park a SIGINT ship, S-I-G-I-N-T ship, in the South Pacific to grab signals from the Eastern Bloc. The Soviets probably did the same thing parking in the Southern Indian Ocean. It turns out that this method of spying works for radio astronomers too. Would you like to record an event like this? Well, you can. Uh, there's a, 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 a website that you can go to called NASA Radio Jove program. It makes it easy. Off-the-shelf radio telescope kits allow even novices to monitor radio bursts from the sun, which are becoming more frequent as the solar cycle 25. So if you just um, if you just type in Radio Jove, Radio Jove, G-O-V-E, NASA's Radio Jove project, uh, that website is quite um, detailed about how to obtain 
uh, these small radio telescope kits and uh, by just setting up a, a couple of dipole antennas connected together in phase um, you can develop, develop a, a, a basic radio astronomy receiver that uh, allows you to be able to not only detect solar flares and I've seen them and heard them and it's quite dramatic when they uh, get detected uh, but you can also uh, detect uh, the galactic center of, uh, of our galaxy and, uh, and it's also uh, possible to detect storm radio, de decometric radio storm activity from Jupiter with these receivers too. But you do ha what helps is to be in a bit of a quiet location. Suburbia does make things a bit difficult. So, oh, I've gone way over time. I can see that um, the asteroid count is 2000 <laughs> as of March 24. There's 2,200, sorry, 2,329 potentially hazardous asteroids. So, all amazing stuff to um, to think about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, lads, and everything. <laughs> we'll conclude our transmissions for tonight. Sorry for going over time. I could have easily have cut out a couple of articles that are there tonight to have uh, made room for what I didn't really want to put through tonight so um, uh, all very uh, very interesting indeed this is VK3 Echo Kilo Hotel the official station of the Astronomical Society of Victoria with the regular Friday night broadcast uh, broadcasting by the Melbourne television repeater VK3 RTV and um, and also by my YouTube channel and uh, the chat window thanks everybody up there on the chat window that came in to say hi and uh, do their thing <laughs> so thanks very much and uh, there is a couple of emails that have come through I forgot to mention the email address vk3ekh at gmail.com uh, vk3ekh at gmail.com and uh, I can see that there's a signal report from Don and uh, why is my mouse working there it is um, from Don uh, on tonight is very strong and yep okay and uh, a report from Mr. Lewis, um, very good, and that's all I'm seeing is very good, so okay, I'm happy with that. <laughs> and it looks like the ICOM has survived so far, it was beeping at me for some reason, but it seems like it's settled down. Bloody radios, I tell you. Um, okay, so with that, uh, thanks to uh, the various um, um, providers of tonight's news, astronomy.com, science alert and um, what else did I have uh, something called um, Ear Science Alert mentioned that didn't I yep and uh, spaceweather.com yep all right all very good stuff okay let's not prolong the agony um, so right now since we're only broadcasting on 80 meters we still haven't quite got our 160 meter service sorted out yet but we'll get there so this is VK3 EKH we're going to take a quick quick listen on 80 meters to see if anybody is out there wishing to uh, to report on tonight's session and uh, or report any auroral activity that you may in fact be seeing I don't know I don't think there is anything really tonight I think it's pretty quiet compared to last night there it is this is VK3 EKH listing on 3541 kilohertz for any stations wishing to check in All right, we have a few stations double there, but I got VK3GL, VK3BSE, and who else was there? Uh, VK3 Kilo Hotel Tangles, did you build? Thanks, Bill. Uh, got you. Uh, any other stations there? Oh, uh, yeah, we've got you too. <laughs> okay, so GL, BSE, JR, JH, SPX, KHT, anyone else? Mm, somebody there, but a little bit off frequency, um, I think. Oh, all over the place. We'll come back to you. 
stand by. Um, okay, have a say, Greg. VK3 Golf Limo, Bunyip, VK3 EKH. VK3GL, VK3EKH, I was about to say CSJ2. Yes, uh, no, the stream didn't drop out. Um, I've been keeping an eye on that uh, through the night, and it's the little the little red box that tells me that I'm streaming uh, continues to uh, stay red. So I, I haven't seen any dropouts at all. Um, I, Richard VK3VRS is um, may be able to to confirm that. Um, uh, because he's uh, he he takes my YouTube stream I think and feeds it over a Discord, um, so I don't I don't believe I dropped out. I haven't seen a drop out. May have I don't know. Um, and uh, look, I I've just realised that there's a lot more discussion in the chat window. Um, my uh, screen hasn't been refreshing, so I can see that there's been a lot of a lot of others there. And uh, thanks, Steve, Mr. SPX for putting up the pitch there and the guy's name. How come I forgot that? Eddie Pang. Uh, Eddie Pang, a member of the ASV, who was up at the Dark Sky site last night and took that wonderful picture of um, of the Aurora from uh, Heathcote. My audio, there it is. So I've got the picture up on screen right now for those watching Repeater and YouTube. Uh, so uh, it's it's pretty good I've never seen the Aurora but to have seen that from Heathcote um, you know right up into Victoria there is 
is, is pretty good. So I'm, I'm very impressed. Very impressed. Good on you, Eddie. You've uh, done well. Eddie Peng. Peng. P-A-N-G. Um, so excellent stuff indeed. And uh, very good indeed. All right, thanks, Graham. Um, I'm slightly, uh, it's only half past 11, and I'll probably have a late night. I'm feeling tired. <laughs> but we'll, we'll have a little chat afterwards. <laughs> Um, now, I think it's John, VK3BSE, was it? VK3 Bravo Sierra Echo. This is VK3 EKH. Yeah, thanks, John. VK3 BSE, VK3 EKH. Well, it sounds like that you may have seen something. Um, just the, the very, the very subtle glow of uh, of uh, an aurora. Uh, it's about the right direction, uh, that's for sure. So, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, look, I, I've I've heard reports of people seeing the aurora. Uh, as f as far as uh, Queensland, and uh, as, and certainly out at Perth, Western Australia, and South Australia. Um, so you know it is possible. Um, I don't think uh, we'll ever see the uh, the strength of a, a, a rural activity like they do in in the north northern latitudes, um, where it can be pretty full on. Uh, I I'd be quite happy just to to tra travel to the northern hemisphere. Uh, just to be able to see uh, that kind of a, a raw activity, uh, activity. But yeah, thanks, John. Thanks for the report, and thanks for calling in. And uh, do appreciate that. Um, thanks for the report as well. I've already said that. <laughs> thanks, John. You're about five or nine plus ten. Um, we've, we've got about an S9 noise level here, but uh, you're over that. So uh, and a little bit of lightning static there too. Uh, across to you there, Frank, VK3JR, VK3EKH. VK3EKH, uh, and the group VK3JR, uh, the group VK3JR, and the Last week, so it's not too much. Uh, and it's interesting with the storms around. Uh, 
Frank VK3 JR VK3 EKH you're about 20 over and uh, coming through nice loud and clear and uh, yes I, I made sure that I got all the all the numbers and figures out uh, from space weather even though it was 10 past quarter past 11 I always try to to make it uh, around 11 o'clock I really need to sit down and time these articles but I don't I've never done that so it's <laughs> probably going to go wrong thanks Frank and um, we'll have a listen out tonight too. Um, okay, Martin VK7JAH down in Tasmania, VK3EKH. Have you seen any auroral activity down there, Martin Gade? Which address did you send it to? By the EKH one or uh, my Big Pond one? Uh, the other Big Pond one? Okay. Um, I'm looking because I, I, I generally keep that inbox open. And let me just refresh the inbox. Not that I have to do that. Now, the only emails that I've got. If this was tonight, the only emails that I've got here is from Don and Graham. Uh, I'm look down. Um, I really can't see anything else in the last couple of days. So, no, maybe not. Um, maybe not, Martin. You can always send them again. <laughs> Uh, vk3ekh at gmail.com uh, or my home address clinton.jeffrey at bigpond.com that works that's working now at least uh, but yeah try again man um, I'm looking at discord as well because I know you can I don't know how they do it but I know you can attach pictures to the discord uh, thing as well so maybe you can try and attach the images to the to discord there don't know how you do that Anyway, all right, no worries, Martin. Um, who's next? Um, thank you, uh, Steve, VK3SPX. Thank you for uh, that, that uh, putting the image up there on Discord. Uh, I've completely forgotten his name. Terrible. VK3SPX, VK3EKH. Uh, VK3EKH, VK3SPX. Yeah, I can't see anything No worries. Um, yeah, I put up there because um, I, I lost your YouTube uh, stream as well at the end of uh, Tamitha's, um, or probably the end of Tamitha's report, as um, as Graham was saying. So I um, I went back to your um, your CSJ um, channel and found there was a second uh, YouTube um, live stream and clicked on the second live stream and then everything came good. So I don't know what's happening there. It seems like um, it branched to a different um, live stream um, there. So that's what happened. So I didn't actually get to see that uh, image you're talking about, but I did. Um, I just uh, extracted it from my uh, phone, from the Facebook group and popped it up there, as you can see. Um, I, I did join late today because um, I was out trying to get an order or a photograph too, and I, I did post earlier on the Discord channel. But um, I don't know, it's nothing like Eddie, so I don't know whether it was really an aurora or whether it was a bit of a glow from something else. It seemed to be in the right place, uh, and I thought it was, but uh, 
given that Martin was um, down there and Tassie says he can't see it, well, I don't know, maybe maybe it was a glow or something else. But, um, yeah, so that's a bit disappointing. But anyway, um, it was a bit of fun to get out there. I should have done it yesterday. Yes, well, so uh, there was a few interesting things you discussed today. You talked about that light sail business and, and um, pushing spacecraft uh, along. I know there was this scheme to sort of push a light, a light sail type craft along to uh, to Proxima Centuri or whatever. But I did um, kind of wonder about this because, um, you know, it depends on how much this thing weighs, but, you know, let's say this spacecraft weighs a kilogram. Well, by the time you get it up to um, half the speed of light, um, if there's any inhabitants in, uh, in Proxima Centauri, I don't know how they're going to feel about receiving our little spacecraft uh, weighing about a kilogram going half the speed of light. It's probably going to dig a crater about five uh, kilometres deep wherever it hits. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Um, what else? Oh, look, I must thank you too. You you, um, you left the YouTube running last week uh, when I had uh, the QSO with uh, VK9WX on Willis Island who joined the uh, the uh, the channel of the callback last week. And um, I could hear him fairly well, so I called him up afterwards. And uh, it was great to listen to that the next day uh, on, on the YouTube um, video there because that was a bit of a thrill. Uh, I don't have too many of my QSOs showing up on YouTube. In fact, I don't have to be the only one. Anyway, that, that was fun, so thanks for, the, thanks for doing that. Okay, all right, thanks very much, Clint. Um, good signal, 30 dB over 9, as per usual here in Central Victoria. Uh, VK3, KH, this is VK3, SPX. Yeah, good on you, Steve. VK3, SPX, VK3, EKH. Yeah, I actually listened in on that last week, um, almost by accident, really. I was on mucking around on YouTube and I saw um, uh, the broadcast from last week sitting there and I thought oh, I'll, I'll have a listen to it so I, I often uh, put myself to sleep if I listen to myself and uh, <laughs> um, the one thing I noticed uh, in last week's broadcast um, and, it, and it would be happening right now because I've done nothing about it um, the background noise here in the shack is really loud uh, I've, I've got a cup, there's a fan running in the ATV transmitter that's pretty noisy it sounds like a bloody mosquito in a, in a beer bottle and I've been meaning to fix that uh, I should do it this weekend but it sits there whining away and uh, the the system here is picking that up really badly if I if I don't if I stop talking the AGC picks up everything and the sound just launches to the to uh, all these ridiculous high levels um, now that's only happened since I selected the AGC um, function within vMix. Um, I think if I was to disable that AGC function, it wouldn't be a problem. But that creates another issue with the uh, the repeater side of things. So I don't know. I'll have to look into that because the uh, the sound is a bit of an issue for uh, for the YouTube side of it. Anyway, thanks, Steve. Yeah, I'm looking at that picture now. It's it's there on Discord. And um, I don't think that is any kind of auroral activity. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, that that looks like city lights. Um, it looks like uh, it, I, I'm not sure exactly which direction that's that's taken. Um, you say due south, yeah, okay. So due south doesn't uh, doesn't mean that you're looking towards Melbourne. So it could be Geelong. It might be lights, uh, city lights from Geelong. Um, uh, reflecting off low cloud, but I wouldn't say that's all. No, not yet. <laughs> anyway, no worries. Thanks, Steve. All right, across to you there, Bill. And I, look, I do apologise for the uh, YouTube channel. I don't know why it's out of my hand. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's got to be MBN related. Um, I've, I've got myself a new phone here. I, I stuffed my my old Samsung up. Uh, I dropped something. I mean. I don't know how many times I've dropped my phone and it survived, uh, but last uh, last Sunday night the, the the phone was sitting on the on the uh, the table downstairs, and I, I was picking up a piece of equipment to uh, to uh, to move it out of the way because I was about to put my dinner there to eat, and uh, it slipped out of my hand, and it just dropped straight on the face of the mobile phone and it shattered it. It absolutely shattered the whole whole. Uh, glass of the uh, the phone 
and uh, I was so uh, annoyed about that that I threw it, threw the phone down with extreme force to the ground so it, it contributed to a few more cracks anyway so I, I flushed out and got myself a new phone I had to get a, you know, I had to get a phone and uh, this this is one of these uh, new s23s now <laughs> everybody's got an s23 haven't they I'm sure they have um, <laughs> But uh, it's 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 bigger and it's uh, it's certainly uh, a lot heavier than the standard phone. But I, I decided to get this because apparently you can um, the camera, one of the cameras on it, is uh, sensitive to nighttime photography. And uh, I'm I'm very interested to find out how the, how well this will work for t taking pictures of the night sky. So uh, apparently it can be done. So I'm looking forward. Look at that! All that, all those bloody cameras on the back end of this damn thing. Anyway, so um, again, apologies for YouTube falling over. Uh, I don't know why that is. I'm not sure why I talked about the mobile phone just then, but I did. Anyway, across to you there, Bill. If you're still there, VK3KHT, VK3EKH. Uh, VK3EKH. VK3 EKH and the group. Uh, this is VK3. Yeah, no worries, uh, uh, Bill VK3 KHT VK3 EKH. You're, you're coming in about 10 over 9 and uh, fairly loud and clear. I took the mic uh, at the second standby camera I put up on the on the S meter just then, so um, you would have seen the seen that if uh, you were still watching. Uh, but look, thanks for the uh, the report. And um, yes, yeah, so I've got to investigate that that first video that I I played. Um, the Timothy's uh, solar report was was perfect. It came across uh, uh, reasonably well, but um, but that first uh, NASA uh, video, for some reason, um, decided to uh, um, to uh, play up. It had a lot of noise on it. I, I, I'll take a listen to that sound because it might have been uh, part of the video. Um, I'm not sure, but. Um, it was, I was trying to work out where all this other sound was coming from. I thought, my God, that's, that's all this fan noise in the shack coming through. And I'm trying to work out why it's being picked up. Oh, frustrating. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Thanks, Bill. Good to uh, to hear. And, and thanks for watching uh, uh, the uh, the repeater. I think everybody needs to, uh, to try and tune into the RTV repeater because the YouTube channel is just, just dodgy. <laughs> Anyway, if is, is there anybody else wishing to call in tonight? VK3 EKH. Alrighty then. Thanks everybody. Thanks for joining in tonight. Much uh, appreciated. And um, certainly uh, uh, we'll be back next Friday to, uh, to do an, another extended version, I'm sure. <laughs> There's, there's no criteria that I need to finish at 11 o'clock. It's just you guys falling asleep at, off, off and falling out of your chair listening to me waffling on is the only reason why I don't like to carry on until midnight. But, um, and of course it's the same here for me. If you look at my eyes, they're getting redder and redder. So there it is. Anyway, cheers everyone. Take care. And uh, we'll see you next Friday. Have a safe week and weekend. Um, and uh, let's hope that we all see uh, an aurora. Uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks, um, certainly with Solar Cycle 25 uh, uh, ramping up, uh, there's there's bound to be uh, plenty of rural activity. So uh, maybe I can set up my new super mobile phone out there for a whole night uh, recording. And
<laughs> yeah, I'm sure I will do that. Anyway, cheers everyone. This is VK3 EKH, the official station of the Astronomical Society of Victoria, concluding transmissions for the 24th of March. And uh, if you want to find out more about the ASV, just go to the website at www.asv.org.au and all will be revealed. Good night, everyone. All right. <clears throat> well, is that you, Graham? <laughs> um, oh dear. All right, VK3GL. And, uh, oh, all right, I'll just bring up something else here. There, yeah, how's that? That now identifies me as uh, my home station. <sighs> Yeah, I've got a lot of noise here in the shack, and uh, when I'm talking, it's uh, it's all right. Uh, but if I shut up, um, the the background noise ramps up, and uh, I noticed that on video on the uh, video replay last uh, Friday of last Friday's broadcast. I'm just watching uh, on the VU meter to see if I just shut up for a second. the way it ramps up and then dies typical AGC effect in fact what I might do while I'm I'm doing this right now is is I'll just go in and turn off that AGC and just see whether that's in fact what's going on here all right I've killed the AGC and uh, I can see the gain suddenly dropped so I'll bring up the gain so it's in the red uh, like one two three four one two three four. One two three four. Four. One two three four. Okay. See, it's it's not it's not ramping up oh, by disabling the AGC. It's it's uh, keeping the audio level um, where it should be. Really, um, I'll just keep that off for the time being. Yeah, see, so it's okay. That, that's gone back to uh, how it was before. So uh, the AGC was the thing that was uh, ramping up the audio. Anyway, if I've got everything else uh, set up right here, we don't need the uh, the AGC really. Um, I, I, you know, I can use other other things to uh, fix that up, limiters and compressors and whatever. Uh, anyway, we're working on that. We've got this uh, Super Auburn 91. 9100 B um, um, broadcast audio process which I want to get into the system um, that should uh, make me sound like the BBC or the ABC depending on your point of view anyway Gray um, uh, is there anything particularly you wish to uh, to mention VK3 GL VK3 EK, uh, CSJ yeah, okay, VK3 CSJ
Um, in fact, I think I've got, I've actually got an email from the lady um, indicating what she had. So I'll just try and see if I can quickly find that. And um, I'll tell you what's there. Oh, here we go. Right, what do we got? So she says that there's, uh, most of this stuff has got uh, uh, got boxes and stuff with it too. So um, I, I believe it should, you know, untested, of course. But she's saying there's a, a Yaesu FT7. Um, so be interested to see what position that is in. There's a MD1 microphone. There's an, a Yaesu FP102. Well, they're sort of a bit rare. An F, FRG700, uh, 7000 receiver. An FT1000. Uh, a Yaesu FP4 power supply. So that's you the matching power supply for the FT7, so they're, they're sort of fairly uh, scarce if you're after a, an FT7. Um, there's an MFJ artificial ground, MFJ signal enhancer, MFJ VHF dual band tuner, MFJ noise bridge, Kenwood TM231A, which is a um, two meter rig. Uh, RF watt meter, iambic paddle, a Daiwa electronic gear, uh, GME regulated power supply, and um, eight, there's eight antenna poles, eight of them, Clint, so I probably wouldn't mind four of them. The longest is 7.5 meters long, so um, that, 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 that'll be ideal, I think. Uh, that'll be good if we can get all of those, so that'll be really handy. Anyway, so that's the, uh, the story with that. I'll, I'll go over and have a look on Monday and see what we come, come up with. But as far as I think the poles and the uh, dipole antennas and bits and bobs that are outside, um, that's um, basically that's ours, we can have that. So that, that should work out all right. I just have to organise perhaps a time with you when we want to be able to go over there and, and um, I think you've got roof racks for the for the uh, Super Easy to be able to put them on there and bring them home that way. Yeah, all right. So that's the uh, that's the story with um, for that side of things. Um, Right, well, something else I was going to... Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you how work was going too. Uh, now that you've uh, been there, sort of coming back for the for the five days and that sort of thing, so... I, uh, I guess you said only that quite okay. VK3CSJ, VK3GL. Yeah, right-o. VK3CSJ. Um... Yeah, it sounds uh, sounds like there's some definitely some interesting uh, items there. So uh, uh, yeah, when um, when you you want to uh, organise uh, the time across, uh, the Easter weekend is uh, coming up. That might work for you. So uh, I'm thinking about having a, the week off. Um, uh, I don't know, I haven't done any, put in any, any leave for me yet, but uh, uh, I might, uh, it depends on the work, oh sorry, excuse me, um, the, there's a few things, but uh, work at, at the moment is quiet, uh, but there is uh, something that's coming through which might uh, 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 be a requirement for me to, to hang in over the Easter used to break but if I can take a, a, the uh, week off the Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday we'll see um, um, but um, yeah going back to five days a week after after spending 18 months on part-time uh, 
I won't say that it's taken its toll. That's really not not the situation at all. But uh, this 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 week. Um, I think this week was a, a full week for us. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty sure it was. So um, uh, I'm getting used to it, getting back into the swing of uh, five days. Um, I mean, after all, I've, I've worked f over 40 years on five day a week. So uh, it's just been this last, um, uh, last 18 months that I've... Uh, you know, falling into that three days a week and having Mondays and Fridays off. So I'm, I'm, I won't say that I'm missing the long weekend. It's, it's almost as if it's, uh, it's now in the past, and um, it's, it seems funny that I was having Fridays and Mondays off, losing all that, all the public holidays that lurked around those times. Um, but now I get, now I get paid the public holidays. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll hang it in there for as long as I can, and hopefully the work will pick up. So, uh, and it should be. Um, there's, uh, you know, every few days I see potential customers being shown the factory. I don't know who they are, but uh, they always walk around with the, the usual contingency of, of bosses and managers and whatever, and they all big discussions about uh, what's going on as they walk past so uh, we've got potential people that are interested in what we do so uh, I, I know that they're, they're seriously looking for uh, for work to uh, keep us all busy so um, anyway um, we'll uh, we'll hang it in there for as long as we can but uh, uh, I, I would have loved to have retired by now but either way um, so yeah, all right. Uh, um, um, yes, 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 yes. So yes, looks like our, our YouTube feed fell fell over. I didn't see the uh, the red light go out, but it must have gone out. So okay, sorry about that. I'm still on YouTube too. I should uh, shut it down. But I was just doing that experiment with turning off the AGC, and I think it's working to keep the audio down. Um, yeah, what else is there? Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Um, all right. Um, yeah, the mobile, yeah, well, you, you know about the mobile phone. <coughs> I was thinking about getting uh, a new phone. A, a number of weeks ago, I, I saw the ads on TV. You, you'd have, you'd have Telstra and Vodafone back to back selling the same mobile phone. And uh, I've been, I went straight to YouTube and typing in the S23 and looking for reviews and people doing reviews and, and uh, it all looked good. Uh, the S23 certainly looks like a, uh, an interesting mobile phone with its capabilities and uh, I'm still getting used to it. Uh, unfortunately, not a lot of the information was moved across from my old phone. Uh, so there's a, lot, a, a number of telephone numbers I don't have. Uh, and of course emails have all disappeared uh, off the phone and all the messages as well, the SMS messages have all gone and uh, even um, I've got WhatsApp on this and even going from uh, reinstalling WhatsApp I've lost uh, a lot of conversation material that I had with uh, Herbert uh, the amateur over in the Netherlands about the Telefunken and stuff like that uh, which is annoying um, because it was really important conversations. So uh, Bobby gave me some information to that you, I should be able to restore or uh, get you know uh, retrieve the, those messages on WhatsApp. But I don't know. So far, I haven't had much luck. So that's a, that's a bit of a nuisance. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, these these cameras on on, on the, the back of this thing. There's, there's one that's got a really wide angle view on it. You can select wide angle, and it's it's not quite, it's not exactly a fisheye lens, but uh, it's it's the widest angle camera uh, mobile phone camera lens that I've seen ever, and it really looks great. Um, beautiful wide angle shot. Um, it's it's great that they've added that. But I'm I'm really keen to see what the nighttime mode is like. So you know, even when I finish up here, I might go outside and 
select nighttime mode and see if I can walk in the in the darkness and, and have this thing glowing in, in my hand. We'll see. <laughs> I paid for it outright too. I, I didn't take any plan. I just decided yep, that's it. Pay for. It. I wasn't going to pay a cent more than what, what they were asking. Didn't think that was worth it. Um, yeah. So there it is. Back to you, VK3GL, VK3CSJ. Okay, VK3CSJ, VK3GL. Three three yeah, I had a look at them on. I uh, look at the phones on mine. Oh, well, gee, they're, they're um, I think they're about twelve hundred dollars or something like that. <laughs> I'm looking I, I more. The, um, I think I paid one hundred and ninety nine bucks for my phone. It's a, it's a Samsung. Well, I'm special. And it's, uh, I think it's uh, an S12 or something like that, and I'm quite happy with it. It's, it's not 5G, it's 4G, um, but uh, we don't, we don't get any, really get any 5G down here anyway. And um, for the purpose of using a mobile phone, it's not as if I use it for hotspotting and high-speed internet or anything like that. It's just a mobile phone, and I can um, look stuff up on it and that sort of thing. That's all I need, you know. And I only got it on a $30 a month um, plan, which I think is going up to, oh, I think they're putting their plans up to, it looks like all the companies have put their plans up and mum and dad's plans go on, going up too. So I've got to tell dad about that too, that it's going up like um, 10 bucks a month or something, from 25 to 35 bucks that they'll be paying. And I think mine's going up to 40, something like that. We've got, we've got the two mobile phones. So I thought, like, I've got, I don't know whether or not I should review my, um, my my home internet and phone and everything. We really don't use the phone at home. We use the mobile. But the phone sort of all part of having uh, the internet and um, Foxtel and all that sort of stuff all bundled. So it's sort of built in like uh, a landline phone really doesn't cost you anything these days other than phone calls if you make them although often they're, they're like free phone calls and um, it's just a it's just a device that's it's just basically a voice device that's there so yeah I don't, I don't know whether to revise what we're doing with that because you know with the two mobile phones and the home services uh, combined, it's about two hundred and thirty dollars a month, or something like that. So I might <coughs> reconsider what we do there. There was um, there was some talk that it was better to get like a five G modem, and you can have faster internet and cheaper um, as well. So I don't know whether we'll go down that path as well. Of course, there's only me and Alison home here now. Um, Mason's, uh, Mason was the last one to move out. So we don't have to worry about providing services that they're happy with anymore. Um, yeah, so okay, okay, all good on the, the mobile phone, all good on the, the YouTube thing. I, I, I thought I was seeing things when um, some of the, the video had finished and then all of a sudden it just stopped. It was like this, um, this circle come up in the middle of the screen that just went around a couple of times and then stopped. So um, I'm glad that no uh, one else had actually seen the same thing. And uh, but I, I didn't bother go looking for it. I thought, oh, well, it's just cut off, and that's the end of it. As far as the broadcast was concerned. Now you mentioned about some noise um, tonight. When when you were playing that NASA video, what I noticed, I actually thought that you'd left the shack microphone on, and you were walking around doing stuff, or perhaps. Um, you were having a cup of coffee and putting the coffee cup down on the table and there was a bit of noise and that sort of thing. That, that's what I actually thought was going on in the background. Um, so I don't really know whether that was the, the case or not or whether it was just noise on the, on the video itself. Um, so there we go. Now, I will also mention to you, and I don't know whether there's any interest at all, um, Cohen has got a heap of audio gear that he's currently selling off and it's um, it's sort of like commercial um, commercial stuff that's been used for uh, AV 
and AV sort of conferences and um, outside gigs and all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm, I'm picking up a small Yamaha, I think it's a six channel mixer and a, uh, a couple of uh, wireless microphones, good quality uh, wireless microphones and uh, a couple of power amplified speakers in a road case so I'm picking those up from him but he's got, uh, got other stuff so for example he showed me the other day he's got some uh, looks like um, uh, studio lights you know the sort of things that you put on a, a stand for, um, for, for lighting uh, uh, but these ones are halogen, so they weren't they weren't uh, LED, and they have got spare globes and that with them. And I said, oh well, I said to him, I said maybe Clint might be interested in that for lighting as far as ATV was concerned. So I don't know whether you are or not, but he's got that sort of thing. He's got uh, some multi-channel mixers. He's got a rack mountable mixer, so it's a sort of rack mountable mixer that you can put. Uh, into a rack and your and your slides would be and your gain controls and everything would be would be up and down um, in the rack, uh, or you can actually mount it flat so that it was uh, sort of virtually like a console style. Um, so I don't know whether or not you you've got any need for uh, mixers or I don't know whether he's got some compressors or anything like that. But I um, he, he did have I think he had a. A video switcher, um, but I but I said oh, I don't know whether Clint would be interested in that because you've got uh, computerised um, video switching. I think a yeah, mixer, a video switcher, or something like that there as well. So uh, what it is is it's a guy who's been running an AV business and he's clearing a bit of stuff out, and it's not really particularly old, and it all looks like it's in pretty re reasonable nick. But there's a fair bit of it, and Cohen doesn't have it all at the moment. Uh, Cohen's actually um, uh, arranging to uh, clear it out. So yeah, there is an opportunity, maybe, uh, I think, um, and if I remember correctly, I don't know whether Cohen actually said he sent you an email. So you might want to check to see whether you did get an email from him and he might have had some information on there in regard to what he had. Um, okay, on the work front too, all very good. That's um, that's good to know that you know maybe there's some other interested parties in in what they do, and and um, I don't know whether these people are looking for onshore manufacturers or so, or whatever they're looking for. But um, it'd be good if they could pick up some extra work as well. Now, in regards to picking this stuff up. I'll keep that in mind as far as Easter is concerned, but I think I'm working most of Easter. I'm actually I'm actually working Good Friday in the morning from seven until one o'clock, and then I'm out on Good Friday evening. There's um, the uh, the son of or the the son of the late drummer from Led Zeppelin is uh, bringing a, bringing coming over to Australia and doing a tour, and he's at the Palais. And they're doing all the Zeppelin stuff. And um, his name's Jason Bonham. And Jason is actually uh, featured as the drummer when um, Led Zeppelin did a, a reformation one-off concert back in 2012. And he played on that. But he's played in a lot of things. I've, uh, I've actually seen him on a lot of uh, videos and stuff. So he, he's coming over here and I've gone going to see that. It'll be like a a night of um, live Led Zeppelin stuff. So that's on uh, the Friday, Good Friday night. Then I'm working on the Saturday. I think I'm working on the Sunday, but um, I can tell you actually because I've got my calendar here. So what do we got? Um, yeah, I'm working. I'm working on the Saturday, Easter Saturday, and Easter. in mind maybe we might be able to do Easter Monday or something like that might work out okay. Um, particularly if particularly if you're 
you, you know, you'll have Easter off, you'll have Easter Monday, but it but particularly people would be okay if you find that you've got to work for the rest of the week anyway. We don't want to interrupt um, what you might be doing there. Alright, I think that's enough on this, over. And um, enough for you to pass comment on. VK3, this is Jake, VK3GL. VK3GL, VK3CSJ, um, yeah, not a problem. Just, I've been playing around with vMix trying to get uh, that sorted out, so when I change pictures... I don't know why I still have audio dropping out just disappears anyway that's a, a vmix thing so I'll worry about that later um, yeah I'm, I'll I'll take a listen to that NASA actually as soon as I'm finished here I, I might just run that NASA uh, video I've got, got and have, have a listen to the background sound I'm, I'm certain that there was audio pickup by the microphone. I was almost about to disconnect the microphone, physically disconnect the, the cable from the microphone. <laughs> I thought, where, where is the sound being picked up from? But then when I, when I played uh, Timothy's uh, space, space Weather Report, that was perfect. There was no background noise at all coming off uh, her video. Uh, but but the NASA one had all this noise in the background. I thought, oh my god, that's not really coming across very clearly. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure what, what was going on with that, but we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of an investigate. Um, but I, I know that I can fix this up, so it's far, far better than what it is. And uh, at the moment, I'm just tolerating the, uh, the, the current setup. I, I, I really hope that when I, uh, I move everything downstairs, you know, um, I'll be able to have things set up the way I want it. Uh, so it's, it'll, it'll be a, a matter of really exploring vMix and getting a, a good handle on, on how to put picture in picture. And, you know, the old, when we, before we stuck to, started mucking around with digital, um, the old um, uh, Pell composite video mixers were far easier to use. <laughs> Uh, the old analog days uh, have uh, a lot of merit, uh, but unfortunately the resolution is absolute crap. Um, I don't know how come we ever got by watching analog TV um, and video VCRs and my goodness me, uh, what what's uh, you know what's out there now with 4K and, and 8K? Uh, you know you, you look back at. Uh, what we all grew up watching and, and oh, it's unbelievable but that's another story anyway look just touch base uh, when with uh, when you, you think you can get across to this place so let me know um, and uh, like I say if I can if I can arrange that week uh, of after Easter uh, off um, then I've got the whole week available um, we can go at any time that's free to you and we should be uh, should be cool you know, in between peak hour. Anyway, we'll see. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, what else was there? Oh, yeah, yeah no, Cohen, Cohen did send uh, uh, an email. I was meaning to reply. I just haven't quite got around to it, but his, his uh, email, um, I don't think really covered everything that was available. Maybe it did. But there was nothing that particularly grabbed me, actually. I, I don't need any lighting here, studio lighting. Uh, you're obviously not watching video. Um, I, I, <laughs> I showed you the mobile phone. I was doing a speed test with 5G because this has got 5G, and we do have 5G coverage in this area. And uh, I was showing you the uh, download speeds um, um, on 
on 5G, which is quite uh, quite good. Although the upload is a little bit uh, not not as good. Uh, I was getting far better uploads at work, um, but uh, mind you, the the cell cell tower is only uh, a few hundred meters away, uh, whereas uh, the the um, the cell tower here I think is about uh, a kilometer away. So uh, anyway, uh, but we do have 5G coverage, so this does work perfectly well on 5G for what it's worth. Uh, okay, um, there was something else in there too. Um, oh yes, I'll be heading across to the Eastern Mountain District boot car sale. That's this Sunday, um, 10 o'clock I think it is, 10, 10 to 2. Uh, I've got to catch up with a, uh, a fellow who's got some circuit diagrams for an old Vinton base station. So that's the only reason why I'm going across is to uh, to meet, catch up with Kevin to pick up these circuit diagrams. But it will give me an opportunity to uh, to go looking in people's boots. <laughs> so anyway, it'll be interesting to see how they've uh, got it. But I, I might uh, I, I might uh, I might head out to the Moravian one coming up. Too, which I don't know when that is. It's I know it's in a few weeks' time, so I might even be, you know, develop enough uh, strength to go out. But it will be late because I, I do the WI broadcast at 10:30, so it's not not that I'll be there on doors open. I'm not really worried about that sort of thing anymore. Um, so uh, I, I do the the uh, a WI broadcast at 10:30, and so it'll be after 11 o'clock that I'll be uh, heading out if I do. At least the Sunday, uh, it'll be after 11 that I head out to uh, EMDRC's boot, sale, boot car sale, whatever they call it. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave you with that, if, there's, if that's all there is. Um, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't think there's much of uh, the Cohen's up there that I'd be interested in. Um, I probably do need another mixer. I, I don't, but I, I may. Uh, it's 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 just this um, Auburn uh, audio processor that I've got uh, needs a nice uh, microphone preamp to to run into uh, into this Auburn unit um, low noise wide band you know flat <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm considering my options in that area. Anyway, I'm tired, mate, so I'm going to leave it at that and uh, shut down the YouTube link because I'm sure there's people falling asleep. That's, uh, well, there's no one probably watching the YouTube link and there's probably nobody watching the TV repeater. So uh, I've got to turn that off so I can call down the PA. <laughs> VK3GL in Bunyip, VK3CSJ. How are you doing, VK3CSJ, VK3GL? All right then, Clint, uh, all noted. Um, yeah, look, I, I don't know what... I'll, I might have a chat to Cohen and say, look, uh, if he can be a bit more specific in stuff that he does have and stuff that he might be going to get hold of because you might, you might or might not have any interest. Um, so as I said, there was, a, there was like a vision switcher and there was, uh, there was a couple of mixes that he showed me. I can't remember how many channels there were. But um, the one that I'm picking up is uh, Yamaha. I think it's got um, compression and stuff on it as well. But I thought I'll, 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 I'll buy that and uh, and the amplified speakers, and then I might sell off. I've got a Behringer uh, mixer at the moment, and I've also got a, but I don't have cordless mics. Um, and I've also got, um, and then the, the mics I'm buying is all the, with the receivers, there's, there's two receivers and two mics, so that's ideal. Um, and, the, and the speakers too, they're a bit of a more compact speaker and a bit more professional than the uh, audio line ones that I have got. And I think, I'll dare say, I'll dare say think that they'll, um, they'll sound a bit better too. The audio lines aren't too bad and you can run them up pretty loud. Um, but what I find with them is, um, and, um, I've noticed this with other speakers before, but as you crank them up a bit, you sometimes find that you start to lose a bit of bottom end and your, and your top end starts to take off. So uh, I've got some uh, my hi-fi speakers that I got on my TV and everything here are, are Dali speakers. And as I find that I turn the amplifier up, 
I find that uh, mid range and uh, and the um, and the top end takes off a bit. So you, so often <laughs> often if I'm running at a many volume, I've got to trim trim the top end out a bit a bit. Um, just so that it's got more, more of a, a, a balanced, uh, balanced response. And the, uh, the audio line, like 300 watt party speakers that I've got, they do a sort of a bit of a layout. But um, I also find too, they, they, uh, they tend to uh, muffle a bit at high volume on, uh, on the bottom end. You get a little bit of I don't know how you sort of describe it, so, but there's an element of distortion that starts to, um, to, to creep into it. Yeah, anyway, all right, well, um, I'll leave you with it there, Clint. Thanks for the words um, this evening, and uh, I'll be in touch in regard to going over to Ringwood, but I'll try and perhaps do it more so for the Easter Monday so that avoids you having to take a week off, but it also, um, you know, if, if you do have the week off and, you, in, and it's all okay with work, well, all well and good, but at least that way it'll give you the week to yourself rather than have to be running around doing other stuff and use a day up. All right, all the best, mate. Catch up with you later on, and good signal too. It's been constantly 20.30 over 9 tonight. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah. Look, I've got I've got his email here, and, and and this is this is all he says. He says, "Trust you are well and long time no speak." Yeah, right. Um, he says, uh, "I've got some stuff for sale at the moment. Helping a mate selling audio equipment. I've got some rack mountable stuff available. Dad said that you might be interested." In. Um, some audio consoles and two server racks full of height available full height, full height available uh, I do he says I do have some small audio mixers with up to five or six channels as well uh, let me know and see I can send some pictures uh, if you're interested sort of thing that's all he says so I, I've been meaning to reply to it um, but I, uh, I, I suspect that I wouldn't mind seeing some pictures Pictures are uh, a thousand words, so. Uh, <laughs> um, but like I say, I might I might require a uh, another audio mixer. It doesn't have to be big at all, but something that I can interface uh, the uh, microphone to the Auburn um, unit, and uh, and uh, and hopefully that works because I'm using the six channel mix, the sixteen channel mixer here. The Behringer is up here in the shack. And at the moment, I'm, I'm removing it to work on the, the Telefunken and other units downstairs. So it's a bit of a hassle to have to uh, keep picking up this 16-channel mixer up and bring it up downstairs all the time. So it'd be nice to have uh, another uh, good, good quality mixer around or, or something, some sort of microphone preamp that I can take line out into, uh, into the Auburn unit um, and see how we go. Oh dear. Anyway, I'll uh, I'll leave it at that, and uh, we'll uh, have a good weekend. Uh, that is, you have a good weekend. <laughs> and I'll I'll try to have a good weekend, and uh, we'll uh, try and get touch base. Uh, I guess in in the near future, as such. Um. We're um. By the way, we're we're 
We've been communicating on two metres simplex a lot lately, um, too. So we're on 490, Dennis and I. So uh, uh, it's uh, it's been. A, I, I, that's only because only because the um, the UHF side of the um, of the radio in the car, the Kurosun, is that its brand name? Uh, it seems to have failed. Um, it, it's okay on two meters VHF, but uh, on UHF, the uh, something's failed. It, it, it produced smoke, and there was a distinct smell of burning under my seat, driver's seat. So, <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I'm talking to Dennis on the way home from work on two meters FM simplex, and that we're kind of uh, now gravitated back to our old simplex channel. Just thought I'd let you know that. I think you and Cohen use that channel quite a bit when you when you're uh, uh, when Cohen's out, out and about too. Uh, enough of that. Anyway, catch you later. The uh, gra uh, great VK3 uh, GL VK3 CSJ. Yeah, okay, VK3 CSJ VK3 GL. Yeah, usually when Cohen's uh, on the highway. I usually talk to him on Simplex from Nary Warren all the way past through here until he nearly gets home, um, usually. And the other day, Dennis popped up and we were having a bit of a chat to Dennis too. And uh, he, he goes, oh gee, you're a good signal on two metres. I said, oh yeah, well, <laughs> the, um, the two metre antenna's up nearly 20 metres high. I think it's uh, 19 metres or something to the base of the antenna. So uh, it, it does get out quite well. My simplex coverage is pretty good. I had a chat to um, Steve when he was down at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit on simplex as well. So it gets out, gets out really well. Um, yeah, Cullen, has, Cullen does have a small mixer. Um, but it's only a few channels, so I don't know whether it's Behringer as well. It might be. So you could possibly ask him about that. Um, you might actually hear him around tomorrow afternoon anyway, or tomorrow evening. He's going to, I think he's working tomorrow. He's got Flemington races, so he'll usually talk on RHF. But we have been moving from RHF because RHF's got the, the uh, 10 metre FM uh, repeater link running at the moment and there's been yells and all sorts of stuff on it so we tend to leave it alone in case it's a bit of DX. Anyway, I'll leave you with that anyway, Clint, and uh, we'll, um, we'll talk some more. Have a good rest of the night and uh, I'll catch you later on. I've got, what, about six and a half hours to go before so I knock off. Yeah, six and a half. <laughs> Knock off at seven o'clock. All right, cheers now. VK3 CSJ, VK3 GL, cheers now. Oh, I'm glad it's you and not me. Uh, although, knowing me, I, I'm, I, I can still have a late night. I, I can just put on a couple of episodes of 24. I'm, I'm, going, <clears throat> I'm going through 24 again. Uh, <laughs> I'm up to season three on 24 because there's, there's a new... A new uh, um, uh, a new series coming through that Keith and Sutherland has done. It's called um, uh, Rat Rabbit Hole, and uh, it looks really interesting. If you get a chance to see the um, the trailer for Rabbit 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 Hole, um, yeah. Uh, what channel? I think it's Netflix. I think it might be Netflix. Could be. I can't remember. Actually, I can't remember what, what it's all going to be on. But anyway, so uh, yeah, being a Keith the Sutherland fan, at 24. Um, I'm going through that binge watching things again it's probably the sixth or the seventh time I've watched 24 really really enjoy it it's just just good stuff uh, <laughs> oh dear and then there's uh, Star Trek Picard I'm going through that too right now and it looks like there's another Star Trek coming out Star, Star Trek uh, the Dominican Wars I think it's something else that's about to come through or being planned at this stage, so whether that goes ahead or not, it's another thing. But that's another story too. Anyway, cheers for now, mate. Take care. Look after yourself. Have a pleasant morning, and uh, <laughs> we'll catch up with you later. VK3 GL, VK3 CSJ. Oh, what was that chuckle for? A pleasant morning. <laughs> All right. See you later on. Cheers for now. 
See you, mate. All right, let's conclude the vision side of this. Um, to anybody that's still watching the YouTube stream, apologies for the stream dropping out earlier before. So if you went looking for it again, like some of you guys did, very good. Uh, <laughs> and uh, anyway, we'll conclude it now because it's already been uh, two hours worth, I think. So uh, it's a, a big recording sitting on the YouTube server somewhere, which I'll probably delete in a few weeks' time anyway. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, to anybody out there that's uh, watching overseas, well, good on you. So, uh, anyway, um, stand by for colour bars, and uh, we sh we're out of here, and we'll be back next Friday with the ASV broadcast. But we're also doing the WIA broadcast courtesy of Bevan, VK5BD, uh, on Sunday morning, 10.30. And uh, if, um, if anybody's going across to the EMDRC's boot car sale thing, happening on Sunday. Uh, I'll be there for a short while, so uh, yeah, look out for me, although I'll be fairly discreet. Um, this Kiska. Kiska's meowing at me. Um, Alright, uh, that's it. I don't think there's anything else I'm going to muck around with, so I think I will conclude on both channels here. Um, cheers everyone, take care, and see you next week. <laughs>